although it doesn't make you much louder. So thank you very much for being with us. It's such a, a cozy, intimate environment here, with the room being half lit, but we do have all the speakers so much lit. And uh, let's, let's uh, tell, I'm sorry, let's discuss particularly the speakers, uh, rather than the moderator. I am Oleg uh, Sedov. I'm a journalist, but I'm also a business development director at Ross Telecom Solar, and we're here to discuss a very interesting subject. Now, if there is someone here on the stage who is uh, not related to the banking industry, then he's obviously an imposter. They shouldn't be there. But they certainly know a lot about problems that banks are exposed to. I do believe that this is a very interesting subject for the following reason. I wouldn't say about even banking, the problems that they're facing. I would raise the bar. We are constantly saying that pandemic made some sort of impact on us, and we are only going to feel the consequences of the pandemic pandemic, the aftermath, but we don't know what that actually is. Banking, the financial system can actually uh, show you, you know, the consequences of the pandemic, the lacmus paper. It's not that uh, the world doesn't know what's happening. It's that the entire world is online and so that people could get access to online services. Banks responded to that providing financial services so that somebody could get a medicine, somebody could get products, somebody could communicate. Gentlemen, could you comment that? What happened to the banks? What have you done? I know you've raised limits on credit cards. Thanks. On behalf of the entire community, thanks. In order to speak, you need to push the button. And don't do anything to be silent. They will switch you off. What's happening? Uh, we have just the uh, the return from the sound. Well, speaking to the mic, yeah. I believe that. Uh, can you hear me now? Oh yeah, this is good. It's always like this with the bankers. Sign the contract, but the pen is tied to the table. I think uh, I'm in the wrong section because we've always been online and uh, we've never had the offline business and all the risks related to that have been elaborated a number of years ago and uh, we've been doing loans online, everything online. I mean, there's been nothing offline. I think that's our specifics and therefore the question probably is to the guys. I mean, we're naturally the online bank because things have changed for them. For Tinkoff Bank, the changes in this particular areas for business, well, did not just have nothing happened. Nothing happened. A couple of notions. Uh, I'm the moderator, and I decide who gets the mic. As there are lots of unfair things in this galaxy. I actually send a complaint. This is one of them. Dmitry Gadar from Tinkoff Bank. He publicly said that he made a mistake on being in the banking section. The disappointed audience would say, why would we come to Tinkoff Bank? Yes, gentlemen, this is how we uh, create the rules of engagement. First, there are no rules. Any raised hand for the audience. Doubt, demand, requirement, grievance is the reason to take the mic and speak. And in addition, we're always in confined circumstances. We're all faces of a certain brand. And it's hard to be saying fun facts and comments sincerely when uh, the brand is um, asserting certain pressure on you. That's why, gentlemen, you have the right to assert your personal point of view. We will uh, listen to it patiently. Tinkoff has always been uh, very generous. Uh, but uh, which of you had to had to become generous and uh, approach the client? Yeah, let me begin. Yes, please. Vyacheslav Yashkin from Akbar's bank. Our bank was more conservative than Tinkoff Bank. We are not online. We were not an online bank, but the pandemic pushed us very strongly towards um, the change of our format. We began working remotely completely, and now the bank is becoming a hybrid bank. We're going to this format of um, co-working. 
and that creates a very different environment within. And that environment needs to be managed differently. We have been moving from a classical format of people sitting in their particular offices to the situation when InfoBiz is broadening the perimeter and it's all becoming with remote machines. Okay, now you're saying about arranging the work of your back office, indeed. How about client services, the things that are facing the client? Client services are related to that as well. I mean, if we speak about the theme of data breaches, it's about that. We need to consider these points which naturally hard to solve at the moment when at home the husband and the wife which are working competing companies they can send data via the screen of their machines yes that is a completely true story husband and wife in the same room and they might even be using the same computer <laughs> that's the real life today Transcapital Bank, my name is Peter, we're also a conservative bank and we've never been an online bank in, an, uh, in a notion of Tinkoff Bank, for example. During the pandemic, we have tried to launch services and update them, but frankly speaking, we're not giving loans online, for example. We're not there yet. We're doing it the same way we've been doing it previously. The limits, our credit limits, have not been stretched. And uh, in previously, after and today, after analyzing the risks, we have decided that we have decent limits and uh, nobody's going to touch them. No complaints from clients whatsoever. Oh, it was possible to complain against credit limit. Yes, you could. If we talk about withdrawal, well, honestly, who uses ATMs today for cash withdrawal? A number of unique people, I guess, it just to be much more people. Now it is possible to pay everywhere with a, a card or a phone. I mean, there's no much need for cash. I can say on behalf of our bank that almost nothing has changed. As for pandemic-related works and events, connected to the uh, organization of the business, organization of the business security, indeed. There were unexpected changes because we're not the, the an online bank, we're not the remote bank. We've been working in an office and remote work was given only to a very limited number of employees. And therefore, it turned out that there's a different format and something needs to be done with it. And it was exceptionally difficult because uh, neither the hosts nor the managers of the branches had any idea how to manage a group of people who are sitting Nobody knows where, working or not working. No, we'll be speaking about this anecdotes for quite a long time. But that's more anecdote evidence. Anything you want to add? Yes, a small remark about the cash original banks as original large bank. I wouldn't say that cash withdrawal is still there, especially if you're not in the center of Moscow. Yes, regional large bank. Uh, there is something word, some word there that might be out of place against. No, people are withdrawing not in a cash. Uh, not in the ATMs, but also in the shops, at the counter. 
Yes, often in a situation when you, there is often in the province the situation when you uh, give a car to your friend to buy something. And that's a situation when withdrawal limits are quite essential. Yes, I wanted to actually, to actually joke. Of course, ATMs are necessary. I still using them. Yeah, that is funny. That indeed was funny. Indeed. Let me say once more. The limit was fine anyway. Yeah, we have not been changing. Yeah, we got that. But in addition to that, we have other tools that um, can make the payment secure. Like what? Fraud monitoring, for example? Uh -huh, unexpected. That's quite. Does it work? for you. Why not? I mean, it's not about ATMs, obviously. Yes, I've been thinking about where exactly you apply this. It works. Anti-fraud works with ATMs, with Tinkoff, for example. Yes, it's been confirmed that it does work for us. We even had a, an award for, for good anti-fraud. But it's not the point. I mean, we can also do the anti-fraud with ATMs. It's possible. Uh, VTB bank. Guys, if you say that your bank is conservative, I don't know what, you say, what to say. I mean, our bank is even more conservative, I guess. I can speak on behalf of a number of banks, as also they represent the um, journal for banking IT security. As for remote work, banks have been dreaming about it, to cut all of the branches, all of the staff, no need to rent the office, no need to pay salaries to the operation guys, only IT guys and security guys will get uh, extended salary. But as soon as Tinkoff entered the market, all of the rest of the banks are only envious. And during the pandemic, there was a significant push for everybody to think about the extension remotely. And if the process has been in development already, like VTB Bank, all the nuances related to pandemic and uh, corresponding legislation only accelerated um, um, the solution of the managerial and operational problems. Pandemic only accelerated stuff without changing anything radically. Somebody's mic is returning, giving it the return. I don't think the pandemic will make somebody do something. Let me say you this honestly. In Zinkov Bank, we have people with five hands, eight eyes. It's the matter of approach and the concept of work. Before Tinkov, I've been working in five offline banks, Russian and international. I cannot say that it's different here compared to other countries. Yes, Tinkov is more of an IT. There's a lot of development. Certain processes are different, but it's not that um, our processes are 180 degrees are different. I mean, same financial monitoring, central bank compliance uh, rate. Are we speaking about the uh, Tinkoff Bank or it's on the point with discussion? I'm speaking more about Tinkoff Bank. Uh, let me hand the floor over. I have a feeling you have the last chance to say that during the pandemic we faced our clients finally because looks like all the others have not noticed the pandemic. Lately, I've been working not for classical banks, but more for fintech and R&D. Why are they all looking for excuses? Actually, I have the question to the audience. Dear colleagues, anybody cares about the new products and the fact that banks are going more and more online? Is there somebody who does not trust trust um, uh, banking online products. Let me ask it, those who do not raise hands, do you fully trust online services, online banking service? Do you fully trust? Okay. 
Абсолютно верно. You can get the loan via the app. Absolutely. Indeed. Yes, true. Simplicity. The illusion of this world. But it's not fight for security. It's, it's for comfort. And the fighting is happening for a wide generation, for teenagers. It's the number of clicks. Three clicks is a lot. Two clicks is sufficient enough. In this yellow bank, there was a case when indeed a baby just pressed the button and got the loan. His dad literally got the loan, but what if there was a girlfriend who said that she lost the phone on time? I mean, that's an odd story. I know the situation uh, when a particular person, not in a yellow bank, but in another bank, went to the ATM and made 64 uh, transactions of 15,000 rubles to other person's account and then complain to the bank that it's been stolen by the fraud. I mean, if you steal a passport or your card keys, something may happen. I mean, you just if you just put your car keys out in the open, you probably you will not find your cars tomorrow in the, in the morning. I mean, if you leave the phone out, uh, a kid might take that phone and um, get into the email account or write to the boss. I mean, if you're using the phone for internet banking, you don't give it to your kid. Freedom means responsibility. If you don't know how to use freedom, that means that you are irresponsible. If you are not a grown-up person and you cannot be responsible for your actions, please don't use internet banking whatsoever. Do you agree with that pr professional point of view? And bank and Thank you. I will partially agree. I guess Dima was right at a certain point, because um, our nation is financially illiterate. And of course, attackers are using that a lot. In Crimea, there is only one bank, and uh, attackers are actually uh, acting as though they are are introducing themselves as the members of the IT service of the bank. It's like a story uh, that um, uh, the kid stole a car from his father and um, hit the pole. Should we probably punish the dealer who sold the car or the manufacturer who produced the car? I'd begin with the, with the Tesla right away. Yes, behavioral analytics is a lot that we do for anti-fraud. It's based on machine learning. And there's a case with Dodo Pizza. Read about it. So the person using the phone was confirming transactions. He was getting the calls from the bank confirming transactions, and the transactions was rejected by the bank. After your speech, our gathering, it looks like the uh, ruling party consortium. The clients are illiterate. Oh my God, what do you do with that? I believe that there is a, a willingness in the air to redistribute responsibility. Let me express the alternative point of view to balance. So any service bears particular risks. I mean, we know scary stories about um, McDonald's when people uh, you know, went to court after pouring coffee, hot coffee on, on his thighs. But it's like about laundering, uh, like drying your socks in the microwave oven, I mean, or laundering your cat in a laundry machine. I mean, any system has risks, and that risks have to be minimized.
so that the client is not caught by fraudsters. If we get to the remote bank, the service, the any any app, any sort of banking app is connected by default. Just have to be be prepared. I mean, certain fraudsters can call you anyway. And speaking about educated, uneducated public. I mean, we need to educate people whatsoever. I've seen good videos in the on the subway, for example, in the carriages. And that's certain education. But still, there are people who will never be educated about that, like uh, the elderly. They will never know about it. They will never figure it out. What do you do with them? Either limit their access to banking online or what? Meaning that um, prevent them from using the service. Sorry for suggesting this. I mean, do we have the services to make? Um, if we have the services that that are making the elderly financially vulnerable, we need to consider the the ways to block remote services for the elderly, so that they would just be going to the branch. Please, um, yes, yes, close to here. My name is Evgeny Popov. I'm the partner for Positive Technologies. For example, somebody from the bank is calling you. Do you call the manager? Do you do call? You are speaking like the investigator. So look, recently one of the managers of the branch said that only 20% of the calls are useful. Others is telemarketing call tracking from banks as well and fraud calls. I've faced that quite a number of times as well. Therefore, there is lack of trust to call. Do you consider um, just um, uh, completely um, stop? To completely stop calling, calling your clients directly because nobody trusts that calls. Managers are calling with their personal numbers, by the way, and the manager may change. And you don't know who that is. There are three aspects to that. Very serious. Number one, I have the call defender, for example, in Tinkoff app that shows me who's calling me and for what reason. And my cell phone. Yeah is in every database in the world and still there's no problem with spam. I mean, sometimes they call me and it says on my phone that this is ad. I just stop the call. Next point, another very important point. Not all the banks are doing this. They're doing um, the infernal cold calls. Banks should move to use big data to actually make offers that will be particularly interesting to a given person. And that's easy to predict based on the volume of data that's circulating in different Yandex, mobile operators, etc. As far as I understand, I have not heard that there, there were any problems on Tinkoff, negative feedback on Tinkoff. 
because there is decent pre-analytics. Because the offering is probably interesting to the person. Another question. Leading client to online services, banks are trying to Banks are trying to eliminate two-factor authentication to make clients closer to the service. That's not a problem for you, but the, the fact that uh, the um, manager is calling from the personal phone number, that is a problem. I'm sorry. I used to be the client of Tinkoff, uh, VTB Bank, and there are many things I can tell you. I am the entrepreneur with long history. My number is everywhere, and I've been doing everything with banks. Do you know when you become an entrepreneur, your data are becoming, is becoming public? Yes, yes, yes. As soon as you open the... Uh, uh, the uh, limited liability uh, the LLC, for example, your data is openly available online. Yes, speaking about the quality of the banks, cold, cold um, calls are getting very bad rap, exactly. Any business is made not to uh, achieve world peace, but to earn money. So if any particular model is inconvenient but delivers income, it will be working whatever you want. Fraudsters earn well enough. If you have a way to earn money, you will do it, even though that is an inconvenience to somebody next to you. So, again, only 20% of useful calls. This is spam, thank you. Please. Uh, are managers really using their personal phone numbers? I don't know. I mean, I think there are certain banks with very strange process with managers using their personal cell phones and for cold calls. But that is odd. Is that spam? That is probably microfinance. I, I, I'm not familiar with that. Should we really be discussing these problems? I think every bank has partnership programs, sharing data on the users. Yes, but it's been being done in a centralized way anyway. The manager of the call center is a manager, a tiny manager, but still a manager. You see a word play here. Yes, pandemic actually should be considered in that regard because banks need to advertise their services and earn more money. Why not? When pandemic happened, the bank began working more on advertising. Why not? Another question. Dear colleagues, probably when you get to the bank, you know that by default you get online banking app and also a number of additional security services. Does anybody know how to prove their um, use usefulness? I mean, why anybody needs that? That's for security. Oh, is your service not secure? No, it is secure. Then why do I need it? To make it more secure. So secure becomes even more secure. That is... Uh, it's like... Uh, um, cell telecom operators are selling anti-number identifier. Why is it not included by default? Same question. Banks are not having any synergy here, they're not uh, interacting, they're not exchanging data, and not only banks. Telecoms are the same, uh, governmental bodies are the same. But, I mean, the database of the... Um, of the untrustworthy, unreliable lenders is there. Yes, it is. They exchange this data too. 
Вот, что касается... As for security of services, Олег, let me share this. Insurance against the fraud. When they when they um, impose the service on anybody, there is an obvious question. Are the things so bad that you want to impose the service? Guys, I ask this for a reason, because we're starting to transfer responsibility on the shoulders of our clients. And I don't think this is a useful oscillation, because a long time ago in the Great Britain there was uh, the practice that uh, government put all of the responsibility uh, on the shoulders of banks, and the clients stopped caring about that. Nobody even updated antivirus antiviral service. Now we are also trying to put this responsibility on the shoulders of the client. Is that normal in this particular situation, this client of interests? Is there any way that the market uh, mechanisms can help, or we should only rely on regulators who have not helped anybody ever yet? I would love them to vote, yes. Tinkoff is good today, I see. В онлайне всех хакают даже в аналоговых микрофонах. Okay. So what is the, mar the market doing with you? I believe that the significance of security will only grow higher because objective reality is not changing, but there is hype around security. The banking data is being stolen. Yes, it is, by the way. Even my mom got interested in um, uh, IT security. So um, the info biz significance will only grow and it will matter more for end client. So this cyber security will be an important aspect in choosing your bank. And that will not relate to the actual security. It will be more about advertising and branding. But we don't know how it's going to be in reality. I mean, if Central Bank will be doing pin tests, probably instrumentally we'll find it out. But they will not publish the results. Lev, I have a feeling that the subject of the market uh, is um, escaping. Why? No. I just had a call from the fraudster. I mean, Lev is not wasting the time. I mean, one of the number, identifier number service told me that, that I had a fraudulent call. So what makes banks be more secure? Fighting for the client. The one that is more secure and convenient is the bank that will engage more clients. Okay, I understand that. That could be proven. Convenience could be proven and responsibility as well. But how to prove it? Well, it, actually it is simple. There is a big bank and they are asking for money for additional simple services, although half of the population of our country are clients of that bank. And there is another bank that provides those services free of charge. And here, what matters quite particularly is the level of trust. I think that it's all about personal experience as well as experience of friends and relatives. I now have a question. Have you had any issues with banks and parents? Did you face fraud? Well, I see that you are all happy people. I see someone raising his hand, so you have this experience of uh, parents facing fraud. Can you tell about that? Oh, okay. So they are in life and healthy. That's good already. 
Давай, говори, говори быстрее. Hi. Yes, uh, there were some fraudsters that called from Sberbank, so to say, to my parents, and I had to explain everything, and I had to, to replace the card. So, were you waiting for that kind of a story or for something different? I think that this is quite a trivial story, and you don't have to be someone's elderly parent to actually trust people who turn out to be fraudsters. So, some people are not at all aware of our industry and of our particularities, and uh, the girl of us and uh, the girl of the bank is to raise awareness of those challenges. I think that during one of the last conferences, when I was going to the session, I received a call and uh, um, the person told that he was from the security service of uh, the well-known Russian Green Bank. And uh, uh, he started asking trivial questions and uh, I started uh, answering in an unusual way. So his script ceased to work and he did not know what to say anymore. And uh, quite often people just believe what they hear during such calls and they are ready to transfer all this money. So basically the client does everything with their hands and the only thing to do here is behavioral analysis. This is the area where we should go. There are also some additional things that we could use. For example, if there is a call defender, we have uh, an arrangement with the mobile communication operators and uh, we will know if our client receives such a call and uh, all goes unnoticed for the client. But imagine that the client is talking to an attacker and uh, if the client decides to do something stupid such as transferring his money to that attacker, we will not allow him to do that. So, if I'm talking to a bot robot from a communal service company and if I'm making a payment from Tinkoff Bank, this payment will be blocked? No, of course not. The um, communal services bot is not in the list uh, of attackers. Okay, so... I mean, there might be some attacker who will not be part of that list, right? What you're saying is a bit complicated. I'm not sure that, we are, that I understood that. We have been now talking about uh, Tinkoff anti-fraud quality, and we have heard a lot about that. I may believe that if the fraud statistics is zero, that means that the problem is fully resolved. Well, if it is a question, of course, it is something impossible. There was a, a time when the security of uh, remote banking services was described, and uh, I had to give an example of an absolutely secure payment, and I showed just an empty slide, because there is no such thing. There is just low probability, but you cannot guarantee 100% of safety and security. This is just impossible. If you are doing a service, in any case, there will be a risk. There is always some kind of risk in a service. Whatever you do, and no matter how professional you are, such a risk does exist. Okay, let us now speak about what can be done and not just about what are the technological features. Okay, speaking about the tech features, you can do the same thing. You can go to mobile operators, you can agree to exchange information with them, you can agree upon the triggers that you can use in your system. Yes, you're right. But what will happen tomorrow? I suggest make a step back I, to, to a small retrospective because um, we can consider the theory of broken glass, for example, and the way America got rid of criminals. Okay, can you give any specific examples? 
Well, I think that this is a very lively subject. Yes, but what does broken glass have to do with our subject to today? If you are not aware of this theory, it is as follows. As the glass is broken and uh, as this is done by the criminal, next day you just have to repaint the wall and there will be no problem. Same about vulnerabilities. If we react quickly to all the new incidents and if we do it really at the same time together without competing for the best technological features, then fraudsters will not be interested in that because it will be too complicated for them. Because as of today, what do they do? They are just using the beaten path and they are going to those who haven't yet implemented those security features. Okay, it sounds nice, but too catchy, as in marketing. Remember the beginning of the years 2000, Back then, hackers mostly attacked banks because it was easy to withdraw large amounts of money. Why did they do so? Well, because there was money there and because banks were less protected. But with the development of um, Internet banks, uh, such attacks became more and more complicated and more and more difficult to implement. That is why attackers switched to some minor market players. So we need to make sure that the cost of attacking individuals be unadvantaged digits because only in that case the number of attempts to hack will reduce. Theoretically, yes. You know, the simplest and the cheapest attack upon an individual is just uh, deceiving a person and uh, just a theft. Imagine a call from security department from Sberbank. Is it different in some way from just telling wrong things, telling lies. It's just social engineering, because it is as though there was a person on the street who came to that uh, individual and told, give me 1,000 rubles, because I think someone is planning to steal it from you, so just give it to me, I will keep it secure. And this is what is basically done by those fake Sberbank employees. And then people come to Sberbank and are asking why is their account blocked and nothing can be withdrawn. Well, I would not say that banks are not thinking about clients. Naturally, they do think about clients. And there are some banks that do have the possibility of developing high-tech security systems, such as the well-respected Tinkoff Bank. At the same time, in the bank, there are analytics who are on a daily basis adapting scripts of the call center, who are ensuring communication with clients and so on. So naturally, we do investigate into every case of fraud. We are listening to phone conversations. We are calling clients. We are trying to identify who was there, how they were speaking, and so on. Because without that, a robot will not be able to work, and a call center will not be able to work either. So it has to be done in an integrated way for the sake of the client. I'd like to ask you what you meant when you said that the bank is thinking about the client. Colleagues, have you tried to set up automatic payment in a bank? Have you tried to cancel it? My experience is as follows. There are three banks and three cases. Setting up a payment is just two clicks, very simple. But you cannot just cancel this payment without turning to the bank's support. Well, you can just complain about that. Okay, yes, and the service of the bank online will tell me your complaint is received. So when I give money to the bank, the bank seems to care for me, but if I want to withdraw my money from the bank, the bank doesn't think about myself 
anymore. So we are now at the verge of biometrics. We are also at the verge of being able to withdraw money from my card using a QR code. Is it convenient? Yes, and it can be done in a secure way. But I think that deep fakes will be able to play their role. Because now, if you file a complaint to police, you can open a criminal case using video surveillance cameras. But now, there are deep fakes of such qualities that actually I can show anything I want. And we can also make a mask of a person on a 3D printer. and. Uh, there should be a woman in the underground asking people to actually take off their masks. So once again, there is human intervention. Where are we going? Well, I think that uh, we should go with the flow. When Internet appeared, we had to adapt. Now when the biometric features do appear, we will also have to adapt. And only time will tell how well we will be able to adapt to it. On PhD, we have widely discussed those issues, and uh, I wanted to speak about a different thing. What is waiting for us in the future? Sergey, can you speak about that? Um, the good thing is that we will still have a job and we will have even more work. Thanks to Tinkoff, we will all have work. But how are we going to live? Biometric features, are they good or bad? Well, it's difficult to answer that question. It is not a good or a bad thing. It is just one of the tools for identification. Is it a good one? Well, is a password a good instrument or a good, bad tool? Depends on the password, right? Same here. It is a niche, and uh, for some environment and for some conditions, it will be good. For others, it will be bad. If we take biometric features, uh, if we take it as an idea, not as a specific implementation, this is an identifier that is inseparable from the personality. And in that case, this is a very good idea, because I'm already so tired of trying to remember all those passwords in various services. If biometric features were good, I would be happy about that. But unfortunately, as of today, technologies leave much to be desired. At the same time, we do witness some progress. Colleagues, we all have professional deformation, but who of you have provided biometric data to banks? Well, apparently no, no one. Haven't you provided any biomaterials to banks? You did that. Why did you do so? He asked that question. Well, um, actually, I even did not realize what happened. The Sberbank operator just did that. Is that legal? I'm not sure about that. And actually, next to me, there was uh, an elderly woman, and uh, that Sberbank operator also tried to use the tablet belonging to the bank to read biometric data of that woman, and that elderly woman got scared and just ran away. Anyone else? Do you want to share your experience of providing biometric data? Okay, so apparently all the other people either did not provide that data or are not admitting that. Well, actually, the share of uh, Russian residents who provided biometric data is very low as of today. People just don't understand why doing though that, although the very idea seems to be quite good. Are there any 15-year passports already? And have you subtracted the 
time of the pandemic from the validity of the passport. I think that as for foreign passports, there are two options. You can make a regular five-year passport or you can make a biometric 15-year passport. But what's the motivation? There are these technologies that may seem amazing, but how to motivate people? Well, the motivation can be access to services. As of now, there are no services, that is why people are not very motivated. Can you think about services that would be based on biometric data? Can you give an example? Well, banks usually use high interest to motivate people. Okay, but why would the bank need that? Well, it is what we started with, it will allow them to save money. And who of you have Face ID on your phone? Wow, the trust level is much higher here. So you do trust the gadget in your pocket more than to a bank that spends millions for security. And here it is uh, the team of security people. That's a bit surprising. I think that uh, it's not so much the matter of trust to Apple as a company. I'm not really entrusting my biometric data. Why did you say this word? Let us agree on the following rule. If you say the word Apple, you will have to pay all of us. Okay, so... Indeed, we do use our face and our finger to pay, and no one has any questions. I do have a question. All remote systems, uh, such as applications and online banks, are working with that word that was banned from using Android, so we do trust them without any conditions. Oh. You might as well have said this word and paid for my buffet. Let us now have a look at the number of leaks from Apple and the number of leaks among other banks. And uh, another question is who bears the responsibility? And can you say where you can see the number of leaks in Apple and the number of leaks in our banks? Of course, this is not state statistics. You can just find this information in media. We got on Darknet a publication about a data leak, and uh, we undertook a massive investigation, but we actually don't have this format. We started investigating further, and we finally found the database that was sold uh, on a black market, because when you purchase a database on a black market, uh, it costs 100 rubles, and when you sell it as a banking database, it will cost 1,000 rubles. So here's a business model already. Actually, this database overlapped with that of other banks. So, guys, you mentioned that the Tinkoff representative mentioned Darknet as a source of their information. Sometimes vendors leave you without any other choice. Although you can use PIN code, but it is not convenient, right? Once again, we always have to remind that convenient things are not always secure, right? We all know that it's all about risk assessment. If you keep billions on your account, it's better not to pay with your mobile phone. And it is, if it is 30,000 rubles, well, why not? You may lose them as well. You know, I have uh, been in the company of people for whom these amounts of money are just pocket money. So it all depends on the context, of course. And what about offering people a certain amount of money for biometric data as a cashback, for example? It's also a financial matter. And what if uh, uh, the person has 10,000 rubles on the account? Will he or she be ready to provide biometric data? 
So it's the same thing with the mobile phones and with the phone numbers that are being purchased. And usually we know that the more expensive the smartphone is, the more convenient your work is, and uh, you are paying for your comfort. You know, I was truly shocked by this imbalance between the high trust to your personal gadget and the banking biometric data. I was really surprised. Has any of you tried to open your blocked gadget with your fingerprint after a swimming pool? It doesn't always work, right? Do you know why in Africa such a technology is not widely used? Because uh, there were ATMs with biometric data and quite soon many people lost their fingers. And uh, uh, also the fraudsters knew that the fingers needed to be warm, so they used uh, microwave ovens to heat them up. So it's all about the context once again. What was the core idea of biometrics. The California University managed to get 800 random fingerprints, not thousands, not millions, but 800. And using those fingerprints, they were able to make a universal fingerprint that could open any smartphone. Because uh, if we go back to our consumer devices. Once again, these are consumer devices, so it's not a fingerprint scanner that will be used in a Swiss bank. It can be used as an additional security feature, but not as the main one. Experience shows that if you have a PIN code uh, that you don't like, you still can remember it, but you will never get a second finger. If one finger was compromised, you will never get a second fingerprint. I will reveal you a secret. You can scan two fingers using that one scanner. Can you open it? Can you show it? Let's try it in Android, for example. Okay. <laughs> Speaking about compromising, it all depends on a particular technology. Actually, compromising fingerprints and voice uh, does not absolutely mean that the attacker will use all that. And if we are talking about your particular device, the face recognition or fingerprint scanning, well, what if it is compromised? It's not such a big problem. I'm being told that we have to wrap up, so I will try to reflect here. Guys, you have all been amazing, and uh, it is true, all of you. But I was a bit upset by the fact that my expectations of our meeting were too high. I actually wanted to hear more revelations for tomorrow. I was a bit concerned that you offered to speak not about tomorrow, but rather about yesterday. I asked the dean of the economic faculty of Moscow State University about the willingness to get back to the times before the pandemic, and I asked him how reasonable is that behavior, and he said that um, it is not justified at all because uh, we will never go back, but at the same time we don't know where we are going. That is why we might want to go back to the past, but it will never be the case today. We do live in an uncertainty and we, it will go on like that. And uh, cybersecurity professionals as well as ha hackers are indeed in the vanguard of changes that were launched by online, by the pandemic. The scale of consequences has not yet been fully manifested. We are only just beginning this conversation. That is why it is so spontaneous. But still, we already have some examples, and I hope that it has been useful for you. It was interesting for me, and it was a pleasure. Gentlemen, thank you. Don't forget 
that your gadgets may be compromised.